Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here, welcome back to another Brave 9 video. Alright, so the analysis of the Ledakrat versus Slain. So hopefully I'll be able to give you guys an insight on how good they are. But first things first, before we jump into that, for any of you who missed my live stream earlier today, it was a pretty long one, I can understand that. But let's talk a little bit about the campaign party package first because I think this is a very important topic for a lot of players looking to spend their diamonds. Obviously, everyone can have their own opinion. And if you think that mileage and PT is more important, then sure, go ahead and skip this and don't buy this. Just spend all your diamonds on the pools. But with how RNG-based luck can be, I want to say this all to, these two especially are a good buy. This is just my opinion, all right, based on my experience of playing this game for a couple of years. Now, why do I say only these two, right? Package 1 and Package 2 are worth it because this one, you get the Legend Skill Transfer Ticket. Now, right now, there is a free transfer going on for Legendaries. So most likely, you won't be needing another Legend Skill Transfer Ticket, but if you do, this one is not bad. But I'm going to say the first two, the left and the middle one, these are both good value package. If you're considering to spend your diamonds here, definitely give it a shot. All right, let's jump into the video. Okay, so let's talk about Slain first. What is Slain all about? Slain is a boy, therefore he's a Shota and everybody seems to not like him. So stats-wise, stats-wise, 2k attack, not bad. Decent HP right there. Already very high crit rate and crit damage. So with this high crit rate and crit damage, you can probably just go at one fatal rune and then you don't really need to give him buff at all. He will always crit, right? Uh, even with uh, even with Celia's, what do you call that, aura, if you have a strong fatal rune that gives 60% like legend plus or epic plus, I think you don't have to be worried about the crit rate decrease right there. All right, let's go into the skills. So uh, at plus zero, I wonder if this guy is a budget unit because based on what I see, he might actually seem like a budget unit. Hey Chai, what's up? Alright, so King's Fury at plus zero. Uh, Resist additional turn when Ally's Grave is created. Okay, so this is very important that you guys know that this is Ally's Grave. It's not like Grave on both sides because some skills have Graves on both sides, right? It's very confusing like Velfen's one or Vals, right? But this one is only Ally's Graves. So you have to have or force your ally to die to be able to get this additional turn. So grace created during additional attack. Attacking opportunity do not trigger additional turn effect. That is interesting. So uh, when ally's grave is created, you get additional attacking opportunity at the end of the current round. At the end of the current round. So that means the spell card or whatever will still take priority, right? So this is his main damaging skill. So additional damage after normal attack. Deals defense ignoring additional damage to the enemy. So attack multiplied by crit damage, multiplied by additional damage, okay. DOT, defense ignoring DOT. Okay, defense ignoring DOT. This is cool, this is interesting actually. Do we have any characters right now that has defense ignoring DOT? I don't think we have. There are some monsters in campaign and evil castle that have that. But I don't think there's any like characters that we can use that have this defense ignoring DOT mechanic yet. No, Sato is fixed. This is defense ignoring uh, DOT, it's a bit different. So the difference is fix meaning that you cannot crit, right? Fix meaning that you cannot crit, it will deal a set amount of uh, DOT. But defense ignoring you can crit, but it will ignore defense. So that means if you have 100% defense, right, it will ignore it. In a way, this can be better if you build crit because every single tick does crit. Okay, so that is good. That is good to know. But since Galenia is everywhere, I don't think I wouldn't worry about this too much. But it's going to rely on this ball to kill the opponent. Okay, increases maximum incoming damage reduction threshold. Why does the warrior need this skill? I have no idea. Minus 81%. So for those of you who are not aware, I think the maximum damage reduction for conventional uh, characters or conventional heroes are, is 75% or is it 70%? So this one is 81%, which is already quite high. Okay, so crit damage boost every turn. There are a couple of things that I like and I like. Number one, I don't like that he doesn't have immunity. He doesn't have immunity at all. Alec has attack interference immunity, right? Most uh, magicians has debuff immunity, like Nata, Celia, Velfen. This guy, no immunity. I don't know, maybe he'll get it later on, we'll have a look. But at plus zero, he's not, he's not budget friendly. Oh my, from plus zero to plus one, the upgrade is so minuscule. 
This one become 30%. It's quite minuscule. Uh, 25 still, 45. 90. Okay, so at plus 3, at least it's a bit tankier. Plus 6. Okay, so minimum. If you want to build this guy, you gotta have plus 6. So you get stats weakening immunity. And attack. I just wish this is... Uh, I just wish that this was before battle, right? Because... Enemy can still charm you with Mia or whatever. I mean, nobody uses Mia in Arena, but you the idea is you still can get charm, you still can get stats weakened by conventional means, not by reflective means, because you do get this wanton self before 40, 60 this time. Like you can see, now the, the upgrade is bigger from 45 to 60. 15% increase, POC, and then 75, another 15% increase. Okay, it's going up in proportion. Very good. At plus 9 from 90% to 99%! So if you want to get rid of this guy, you have to use direct damage, you have to use fixed damage. That's the only way. Yeah, any other sources will be negated by this. Because maximum incoming damage reduction is 99%. Alright, so at plus 10, he has exception now, immediate. Okay, so now it has exception. What the heck? At plus 10, it has exception? Ignore silence effect and applies. What now, Celia abusers? This doesn't solve anything though, to be honest. Uh, even Sigmund has this, right? Ignore silence effect and applies. You can still be silenced, but ideally, it ignores it and applies. Uh, which is just, uh, right now, it's just Celia. Right, it's just Celia that probably gets countered hard right now. Let's see, advanced photon cannon at plus 11. Oh my god, 50%! Going on to plus 14, 90%! And plus 15? What the heck? 90% jump to 150? They, they are forcing you to plus 15 this guy, man. They are forcing you, literally forcing you to plus 15 this guy. If you want the highest of the freaking highest multiplier ever. You want the best, like, effect ever? This is the, this, you have to plus 15 him. So it's a bit pricey, but I would say, like, budget-wise, plus 6 might be able to work if you are in bronze, silver, leak. But once you go high, uh, keep in mind, this can be quite pricey. I'm not sure how does this work though, how does this interact. This skill, if he gets reflected, will he protect himself against this particular source of damage, right? Because the thing is, some units, like Gran, I'm pretty sure Gran can reflect his skill back onto him, right? Reflect part of received damage as barrier ignoring damage. So I'm pretty sure Gran counters this guy like crazy. You hit a Gran, you will die, because it doesn't matter if you have this barrier, minus 39%, you're gonna get destroyed by Gran. Uh, Gran's Reflect treats it as a barrier ignore, back to you. So that's something that we have to keep in mind, right? But if you guys, any of you, if any of you have slain, we can try it out later. That's something that I'm curious. But you gotta have him at least at plus 3 to see the effect. Alright, so let's move on to the next one. The one that everyone has been hyped about and people have to smack talking me about. When you spell his name in reverse, it's called Duck Adele. Alright, let's go. What is this guy all about? First things first. Very important. Gotta talk about the stats, alright? Gotta talk about the stats. 1.2k attack, 3.4k HP, 15% defense, 10% crit rate, 50% crit damage, 30% energy. This is a very well-rounded character. Oh my god, this is a very well-rounded character. You can see the balance between all of this. Okay, so let's have a look at this guy. How OP is he at low skill level? We know that he's very strong in the high skill level. Alright, Homunculus duplication when battle begins. Duplicates ally defenders applicable before battle effects that are applied to them, to Ledakrat. That is pretty broken. So it all the skills that have before battle, he will copy them, literally. If you have 8 defenders, oh my god, will he copy it at their skill level. Let's say your grand is plus zero. Will this guy copy a grand's reflective counter at plus zero? Or will he, like, do you need a grand plus 15 for him to be able to copy the strongest ability for grand? So that's something that I'm curious to find out as well. We're gonna check that out later. All right, it's going to be really, really interesting. Uh, boost HP, max HP at the start of battle time, 60%. Copy at current level. That's gonna make more sense. Copy at current level is gonna make more sense. Is there any defender? that has an OP ability at plus zero. Cecilia has it. AOA absorption is OP at plus zero. Who else? Who else besides Cecilia? I think we have a lot. We have a lot of uh, defenders that you don't need investment at all. This, this will either make this guy like a very budget-friendly character 
or it will either make him a very expensive. Carlson? Carlson sucks ass. Let's go check out this skill. Chains of Emptiness survives damage to death by setting HP to 1 instead of dying and terminates Chain of Emptiness effect. Lucius at plus 0? Ah, yeah, that's, that's an interesting one. Yeah, Death Guard, yeah. The thing is, even if you have Death Guard, it doesn't matter because direct damage is everywhere right now, right? HP boost 15k? What? When survived by Chains of Emptiness. Okay, Permanent Self. This is insane, man. Yo, this is insane. This is crazy right here. Okay, when removed or expired, Bestowal receives the unstable effect when Chains of Emptiness expire or is removed. Chain of Emptiness is this skill, right? Okay. Bestows Congestion Bash when attacking the enemy. Bestows Defect Ability when the Unstable expires or is removed. So you get this. Defense Ignoring Additional Damage. Yo, is, isn't this guy a defender? Why does he have OP Warrior skills? The Additional HP times 150%. I'm not sure what it means by additional HP because it usually is either max HP or current HP. Now it says additional HP. Does it mean that it's only going to take this 15,000, right? And then multiply that times 150% additional damage. Is that it? Because if that's the case, it's not too strong, at least at plus zero right now, right? And then going into here, Leda Krat becomes extinct. Okay, so look at this. Uh, deals defense ignoring additional damage. Oh, he does have this ability. Max HP times 25%. And it's defense ignoring. Oh, so this become extinct means he dies. Okay. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Uh, this is at plus 1, 16 turns, still the same. Plus 2, 20 turns, still the same. Plus 3, 100% HP boost, what the heck? This is broken. 2 vital runes, for sure. For sure you go for 2 vital runes, because considering how much scaling you get, that's a lot. Alright, so plus 6. Look at this, 15,000, 20,000 now, wow, plus 7, 145, plus 8, 160, okay, that's a lot, 25,000 now, plus 10, okay, you can see if you increase his skill, you're just getting more HP, you're just getting more HP, that's all, that's all you're getting, you're just getting more HP when you increase his skills, so far, up to plus 11, it looks like Something here, 25%, 35%. Oh, so you need plus 11 for him to be able to taunt. Survive damage to death by setting HP to 1 instead of dying. And terminates advanced chains of emptiness effect. Okay, 5,000. And then there's this, one turn after removal or end. So when chains of emptiness expires or is removed, receives chain of emptiness effect after one turn. Okay, so instead of dying, he will have his HP set to 1. Wait, plus 12 and plus 13, what's the difference? Is it the accession? 14 turns? Oh, 20 turns now. Okay, 20 turns now, 26 turns. So within 26 turns, he would have his HP reduced to 1, am I right? Alright, makes sense, makes sense. And then the last one at plus 15, 30 turns. Alright, so all you get is more turns throughout. He has no debuff immune, yeah. This is one interesting thing, right? If you think about it, this guy has no debuff immune. He can be Charm, he can be Silence, even though his skill will still apply. And the most importantly is, even though he has all of this HP, he can be Cursed. But he doesn't need debuff immune because he has this ability. And can he copy Gran's skill? Yes he can. If you are a Gran abuser like me, I'm proud to be a Gran abuser. This is before battle, hooray, we get to copy Reflective Counter. And we also get to copy, we get to copy this as well, POP! Just use Gran, just use Leda Krat, you get to copy two OP skills. How about this? Can you copy Zenith skill? Because this is before battle, right? So we can apply Concentrated Fire on the enemy and destroy their Alec because their Alec hits you. Yes! Very good, very good. Alright guys, so that's all the time I have for today. So stay tuned for the next video. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, give this video a like because I'll have more testing on Leda Krat coming soon. As always, have a nice day. Good. Bye.